Hello, everybody, and I hope you're having a good Sunday. And yeah, I do have my drawing pad here because I wanted to show you how uh, you have to think when you try to actually create a cane. Hi, Cherry. I'm sorry I am a little bit late, but I didn't realize that it was that cool in the house. We we are having a, a cold front passing through, so I had some problems conditioning the clay. It took a little bit longer than I thought it would. Uh, but anyway, I'm here. Hi, Tina. And uh, the pendant that I announced will be published uh, pretty much right after I finish the live. It is rendering now and getting ready. Hi, Chris. Hi, Holly. So, in order to create a fall maple cane, I'm going to draw one, as usual. And because I didn't dare to, to try and do my other broadcasting software, I cannot switch between this camera and the screen. So, we are going to just go with drawing. So generally speaking, what we have in a maple leaf, general, you know, I'm talking about like a general thing. Bonjour, Ansena Moon. Hi, Darlene. Hi, Carol. So we have pretty much three lobes, right? There's one going like this along the central stem and then one like this and one like this. Each of these lobes has the indents like this, right? And I don't know if uh, you all have watched my uh, colia sleeves. Yeah, I'm in Oklahoma, Tina. But if you're in the Northeast, you got the system that was here last week. So they are pretty much like this, right? And then you'll have the veins. Now, if you want to make a, a fairly realistic maple leaf, then you know that when they start getting the full colors, uh, you pretty much have one color around close to the veins and a different color farther away from the veins. And also that one part of the leaf can be strongly colored in more reddish tones and another part still has some yellowish tones. Uh, sometimes the bottom of the leaf towards the stem is yellowish and the tips are red, sometimes it's backwards. So, obviously, what I'm going to create here will be three different lobes that I'm going then to put together. And also, I'm not going to make them symmetrical. Even if I'm going to repeat some of the colors here in between the veins, but why I was mentioning my colia sleeve is because I'm going to use the same type of technique, and that is a modified barbed cane to do this. Now, the first thing that I need to have, and let me get this out of the way, because as you know, the uh, the leaves generally, when they get the full colors, they have all kinds of uh, little dots and speckles and all that. They don't go like a regular Skinner blend thing. So in order to get that effect, what I'm going to do will be to insert some strings. And in order to do that, I'm going to do a dirty extruder string. Why they are called dirty is because you practically combine different colors. And actually, I think I'm going to get some, uh, 
some green as well not just yellow and red essentially i'll be using the cadmium red cadmium yellow uh alizarin crimson translucent and just a touch of green so let me grab some green too Yeah, you know what, I'm going to put a bit of sunshine yellow too. So this is all primo. Um, it is true that you would get this much better with female professional, but I don't have enough female colors to be able to do this with female. It wouldn't be properly colored. I'm slowly building my stash of female so I can show you more. Um, precise line canes but until I build a stash properly it's going to take a while because as you know clay is <laughs> expensive and getting the primo stash is a little bit outside the regular budget I have for clay so it might take probably another couple months before I'm able to do the whole female caning thing. And that's going to get superimposed with making flowers with Pardo. Hi, Donna. Awesome. It's good that it came because I told you YouTube decides decided that they are not going to send notifications to all the subscribers when somebody goes on or posts something. So you see, I broke all of them into pieces and I'm going to just get these together trying not to get too many similar colors together so I'm going to get them even more because I want the strings to come out really dirty. Okay, now I'm going to create my cylinder. I'm probably going to have too many strings, but they can always be used for something else. and make sure that they are really well stuck together. So they can fit properly in the extruder. Hi, JC. And this is a fairly long thing, so might actually make a couple canes just to show you the differences. Okay. Now, what I'm going to use is this die. See, the one with it's not the one with the smallest holes, but the one right before that. And I could have done this before, but that would have meant I cannot, uh, yes, I did. Uh, but I wouldn't have been able to show you how to create the log. 
but no worries this is a makings extruder so it shouldn't take too long and i'm going to just place all my strings on this wax paper and see how pretty they come out all ingredients yeah so it's a uh, sunshine yellow cadmium yellow cadmium red and the lizarin crimson and green regular green Okay, I'm good to go. I'm going to clean this after the live is over. Now, another thing that I'm going to do is to actually add some translucent to all the colors I'm going to be making. And of course, I'm going to make them in squares so it will be easier for you to see the proportions uh -huh. I think that the audience are in crimson should be enough <laughs> not going to use a full one for the three. I'm going to make three different uh, Skinner Blend jelly rolls. I might actually need more yellow. Definitely going to need more yellow. The red is always so dirty. Okay. But then I also have some white here, uh, which I'm going to use a little bit. So here I have probably about half a, not even half a square. Like one third. <laughs> more out of the way to my room. Uh, generally speaking, with all the so-called dirty colors, the ones that stain your hands and stain the tile, always when you mix a little bit of translucent in, uh, they get a little bit less uh, dirty. Okay, so let's create the Skinner Blend Jelly Rolls. Obviously, I'm going to use alizarin Crimson in all of them. Only that in one of them, I'm going to use just half. Mm 
Okay, so I put one alizarin crimson, one red, one alizarin crimson, half a red, half alizarin crimson, one red. Then this one will get one yellow. This one will get one yellow. And this one will get one yellow and half a white. So I have a total of two and a half, two and a half and three here. So that will determine how much of the translucent I'm going to use because I am going to go. So I want to get five squares in each. So this one has three squares of color. So I'm going to add a two squares of translucent. And these ones have two and a half squares of color, so they will get two and a half squares of translucent respectively. So I need practically four and then two halves. Let me get grab two halves. And now I have five squares in each of the jelly rolls, okay? But of course they are not going to go on the side. I'm going to try and make them kind of go equal. Along the whole blend. This one, I can just place it like this. And these will be my Skinner blends. Okay. Now, let's work on them. And remember that I have my, you can do these, of course, in the V. And I'm working on a new Skinner blend tutorial to show you all the different methods, the regular Skinner blend by Judith Skinner, the teardrop by Cindy Beats, the oblong ovoid by Meg Newman and my V fold. So you can see what are the different ways of making the Skinner blends. And I'm going to move the camera to the pasta machine here in a second after I'm sure that they are all in good shape to go. And it's going to be interesting when we start rolling them because that's when the strings come into play. Okay, let me make sure that I put this camera properly over the pasta machine. And I'm sorry, but I'm working on all kinds of stuff and you can see that my pasta machine area is really messy because, as I said, I had some issues conditioning because I didn't realize how chilly it was in the house. I turned on the thermostat now, so I shouldn't have any more issues. So, let me get back so I can see your chat. Okay, so let's start making the Skinner blends. Now, what 
I want to show you is how to extend. So remember, this is my V fold. How to extend it when I fold them, I simply go a little bit off angle. And again. And now obviously I will have to narrow it down, so I'm going to unfold. Normally I would put them back, I just don't want to keep moving the camera. I'll just put it back on the tile and roll it. get back on the thicker setting. Hi, Cecile. you a secret when you want to blend them faster you roll it and then of course you flatten it but when you roll your sheet it's going to help in blending much faster and then also when you roll it you can get all these rags in The advantages of having a tiled table. is good. I'm going to put it aside and do the other ones. But you see what beautiful colors. And now the V fold. And 
out the dollar. Hmm? Now I keep going straight. And you need to make sure that your lines are always straight. Yeah, well, you know, in, uh, they kind of go away as you keep doing this, but it's better to pop them. And always, whenever you roll, you'll get your bubbles. It's a given. narrow it in a row. And the way you narrow it in the roll, you just push in. Now the third one where we have a little bit of white as well. One a rich a good rich blade. Uh the ripple blade.
you go on my website, I actually have an article there that should still be featured on the home page about what blades I'm using. And I also give uh, links to where you can get them. The hard blade, I'm using the new blade of uh, Dona Kato. And also the Amaco blade is very good. The Amaco blade, you can find it at Hobby Hobby. But the new blade is supposed to be the best. It's N-U, not N-E-W, new blade. So these ones, I've had these ones for, I've been using them for like a year and a half and they are still sharp. That's the, the best that I've had. The Super Slicer kit of uh, Polyform, honestly, it's good just for the flexible one when you want to cut shapes, and the ripple ones are good. Hi, Joe. Hi, naughty but crafty. I guess I haven't seen you in the chat before. And Darlene, I answered you, but I'm not sure if I said hi. Okay, almost done with the Skina blends. <laughs> I am ill.
and this is done too. Okay. Make sure that I got them. Eh, not really. It's a little bit darker than the candy corn. Okay. Now. Now comes the interesting part. As you can see, they are all kind of like a combination of similar colors, but they are not exactly the same combination. So when I'm going to start rolling them, the rolls will have a slightly different uh, look, right? Because as you can see, this one has a lighter yellow, almost like a cream. This one has more yellow and this one has has more yellow and more crimson and this one has less crimson and yellow and more red. Now, of course, I'm going to make them long, right? And then the fun starts. Let me grab some more wax paper to place my skinny bones I'm not working with at the moment. Now let me turn down the thermal stuff because now it's getting too hot. Okay, <clears throat> so what I want to obtain will be a long, thin strip, right? Right. So first what I'm going to do is to run this on a thick setting. And then I'm going to keep running it on thinner and thinner and thinner settings. Right, and because it's a little bit longer than my... Uh, flat blade. This is a very crappy blade. It's the one from the Super Slicer set. But uh, that's why I was saying it's that's pretty much the only thing it's good for whenever you have long lines to cut. Because it's not it's supposed to be rigid, but you can see it's not rigid at all. Bonsoir Lilou. So I'm going to first stack this and then I'm going to run it through the machine. First on the thick setting and then on successive thinner and thinner settings. And you want to make sure always that they are well stuck together, otherwise they'll start separating when you start running them through the machine. So first the thick setting area. got this and I'm going to go thinner and thinner. And I don't want to go super, super thin with it. This was a six on my machine. Because if I go too thin, then I won't be able to manipulate it at all. So I'm going to start on the yellow. OK, come on, Miss Camera.
And now starts the fun. I'm getting a few of the strings here. And why I did them this way, instead of making some strings yellow, some strings green, some strings, because what I'm trying to reproduce here is the randomness in the leaf. So if I put these strings like this, then no two slices will look the same because the strings change color as you go through the cane, right? And at some points, they will have the exact color of the jelly roll. And I'm placing them fairly randomly. Well, yeah, you kind of need to make them look as natural as possible, right? And I know it's a bit time consuming, but I can assure you they will be beautiful. But that's what we need to do with all the uh, jelly rolls. And yeah, I don't, uh, I suggest to not try and work with more than four at a time because you may start getting them all tangled. But as you can see, I'm using both ends of the strings. Yeah, I think next time I'm going to make <laughs> the jelly rolls ahead of time and I make only one on live. But this is going to take a while. Because remember, I have to show it in a not complicated way so everybody can make it. Easily. As you can see, it's not really a, that much of a master technique. It's just time consuming, but I think that even a, a beginner could do this. I mean, 
not always stuff that requires a lot of time is master class. But generally speaking, stuff that requires a lot of time is worth it. And then remember, what I'm going to make here is going to make a big, <laughs> yeah, it's true. Uh, it's going to make quite a bit of a cane. I think I'm going, as I said, I think I might make actually two canes. So that you can see how you can uh, change the um, the look. And this is what I was telling you. Why I'm doing this? Because normally speaking, when you do the jelly roll, and if I do this, you would be able to see that they all go in a line. But because of the fact that it's a dirty string, sometimes the color of the string is exactly the color of the sheet underneath. And that means that in that specific position, you will not see the string. So it will cut the idea of the dots being in a line, you know. So it will make it look way more random. Oh, hi, Irina. Yeah, it's not really a master class. That's what I was saying. As I said, it's just a little time consuming. But otherwise, it's not that hard to make. And you don't go all the way to the end. The same as uh, you didn't start all the way from the middle. You stop uh, enough to have about, I don't know, like three layers of rolled up sheet around at least. to end the, the jelly roll. And yes, you can put little bits in there. Because again, we are looking for randomness. So I'm going to stop it about here with the strings and just finish the jelly roll. Now with the other two, I'm going to go a little bit. Uh, hi, Colleen. I'm going to beat a little bit faster because I already explained what I'm doing. Now, your main thing will be to make sure that you don't get air pockets inside. So start from the middle and go towards the ends. OK, where's my acrylic book? There we go. Okay, let's put this aside and do the other ones. So the same thing. I'm going to cut this 
and get it through the no uh maple leaf i don't know how it's called hold on let me look let me do the translation Lenovo list. Yeah, let me write it down. Oops, not you. Okay, my movie is done. Got so many. There you go. So the same thing. Always when I cut this, I make sure that the middle one is the one that I'm going to use as a base is perfectly straight because the edges, obviously, they will not be nice and straight. So <clears throat> that I can, and you have to always make sure that you got the, the color on color. Yeah, and of course you can use this kind of uh, stuff also for flowers. But the thing with the string, uh, if you do it the same color, that's one of the techniques for lily flowers. When we come spring, I'm going to make more flower canes and flowers. As I said, in January and February, I will make a lot of uh, flowers with fardo and sculptures. Okay, now let's go again and get this long. And again, I'm going to start with the light one, always inside. And I'm going to let it be light for a while before I start the strings part. Okay, now I can start the strings. Again, I'm going to pick about four of them. Make sure that I have equal parts. And there should be 12. Yep. Four for this and four for the last one. Okay. No, actually, I'm going to exchange. No, I'm not going to exchange anything. Sorry, I'm talking to myself. So, again, the same thing. And I'm going to do it a little bit faster. Because I don't have to explain. Well, as fast as I can do it. But yeah, as I was saying, this is one of the ways of creating those little freckles that lily flowers have. 
is uh, inserting strings within uh, not necessarily a jelly roll but a layer layered cane and again you don't have to worry about uh, placing these in any kind of order because they are fairly random as they came out from the extruder. And why I went with equal uh, amounts of clay for the canes because each of them will be part of the three lobes that I have shown you in the beginning. And I'm just going to do a mix and match kind of thing. Okay, I don't want two greens, one near the other. Okay, I can see the chat when, while I'm doing this because I didn't have to take off my glasses, so. But uh, that is the idea and this is why I made the Skinner blends slightly different. You saw there's not a lot of difference, but once I start cutting them and applying them, you will see what a difference it makes and uh, if you haven't watched my colia sleeve tutorial it is in this style not exactly the same of course but you might want to take a look because uh, that one is also based on the barbed cane it's a modified barbed cane pretty much only that with this one, I'm going to actually create the veining using the wrapper of the barbed cane. And the wrapper will be uh, a little bit different for each. Of the segments. But see, because these are uh, were done in the dirty way, I can use both ends because they are not, they are very far from being identical. And remember, go not at exact equal. Uh, distances because you want this to be once again you want this to be fairly random the way that the leaves get all those little freckles of color and that is very difficult to imitate in a cane if you want to preserve the randomness it's easy to do with the with painting, but it's not that easy to do in a cane. That would be not a very uh, complicated one. And I have, as I said, I have the where is my. Okay, let me finish this and I'll show you the pendant that's coming. I already rendered it, so all I need to do is to upload it, but I don't want to start uploading because I don't want to mess up my uh, 
speed and cause lagging on the live. Oh, thank you, Maria, but they are not really nice because I've been sanding, so the tips are gone. I'm going to have to cut them soon, and I'm not looking forward to that because it's a pain every time. I have no merit on my nails, trust me. I inherited very thick fingernails from my mom. So when it's time to trim them, I need to use the, the thing for the toenails to cut them. Because otherwise the regular stuff for cutting fingernails doesn't work. They got a little bit more brittle after I had chemo, but they are still, trust me. I used to use, to be able to use them for butchering a chicken or a lamb with my bare hands. And I didn't need a knife. They used to be so tough, but chemo kind of weakened them. Okay, almost done. And I think we are going to have a two parts live today because, or maybe just continue it next Sunday with what to do with it because I'm not sure if I'm, if I can, uh, I did get a new chair and hopefully soon I'll get that uh, heat pad that goes on the chair and be able to go for longer, but with the, uh, weather today i kind of doubt i'll be able to be on for longer than two hours so i won't be able to show you how to use the the cane but actually what i was thinking i was thinking that uh, i intend to put out also a cane with corn so i was thinking that doing uh remember the pumpkin cane and uh, the maple leaf and corn to cover, for example, a pin and uh, little um, some silverware and a salt and pepper shaker would be a good theme for the for right before Thanksgiving and for the end of November. I am a little bit behind, as you know, on a lot of stuff because of my goggy. But I cannot put him. He is my first priority always. Okay, so I'm pretty much done with this one too. I hope it took less time than the first one. And there is one more to do. Yeah, you can do a charm bracelet. You can do a just, you know, like those uh, sliced beads, like turtle soup beads. Susan does. That would be also good. And there are, because uh, I know I got a whole bunch of uh, copper maple leaves. They are good. They are all three good right now. Seamus is his charming whiny self. Whisper is his charming spoiled self. And his majesty Connor 
Is His Majesty Connor. Okay, so this is the second one, and let me try and speed this up a little bit. We are getting running out of time, but I promise you, if I get, uh, if I need to move a little bit, I'll just uh, stop this and restart another one in half an hour, so I can move around and get better. But I still want to finish today showing you this cane because it's a beautiful cane i used it before and uh, when i start hurting if i keep pushing it i make mistakes so i don't want to make mistakes so if i start hurting too bad before uh finishing this i'll just take a half an hour break and uh, start another live because I want to show this to you. It's a really, really pretty cane. Okay, now let me get this one. So I messed it up. I thought I was on a six, but I was on an eight. So this one is really thin. So it's going to leave less room between the dots. So again, I'm going to go with it until it gets a little bit darker. And now I can start placing the strings. And actually, let me make it a little bit easier. We'll break the strings in more pieces so I can use both ends. Grazie, gracias Antonio. Pero no habla español muy bien. So, if there's anybody speaking Spanish willing to make some translation, Yeah, generally speaking, these strings will not uh, stick to each other much. So you don't have to worry much about that. You can uh, keep them separated quite nicely. So 
so not a lot of worry. But anyway, uh, there are not so many maples. I mean, there are maples, but generally speaking, here in Oklahoma, the maples don't last too long because they are prone to uh, sun scalding in winter. And what sun scalding is, uh, when you have a very sunny day and the sun is bright in winter, so it would heat up the uh, bark, the bark of the, the tree. And the sap right underneath, it gets uh, nice and warm and starts flowing and then because in Oklahoma we have these sudden changes in temperature, uh, two or three hours later you have a drop in temperature of like 30, 40 degrees below freezing. So the sap freezes. And because it freezes, it expands and it uh, separates the bark from the trunk. And sometimes it can even uh, crack the trunk open. I had a beautiful silver maple in front of the house, but I had to take it down because that's what happened. It got such a bad uh, sun scalding that the trunk got cracked almost to the middle. So there was no way of saving it. I was so sorry for that tree. But uh, it's a pity because maple leaves are among the most beautiful in fall. On the other hand, I managed to get some Virginia creeper on my house. And the Virginia creeper also gets beautiful colors in fall. I have uh, English ivy in the front of the house where it's always uh, shade because it's in the north. And then I started uh, growing Virginia creeper on the sides. Okay, this one didn't go straight. Let's go a little faster in this way. Okay, if you don't have fingernails, and it's easier for you to go the other way. I'm just trying to hurry up the process a little bit. I think I should make a tutorial how you can use your fingernails instead of using a blade. Huh. Thank you, Cecile. Okay, so the end. I left a little bit longer at the end because I told you by mistake I got this on an 8, not on a 6. 
So And again, the same thing going from the middle towards the ends to make sure that all possible air pockets are flushed out. Now, I'm going to make them just a little bit longer, all of them, so I can cut them in half. And they all pretty much have to be the same length. C'est ce, comme ça qu'on dit le qu'on appelle l'arbre en français, l'arbre, j'ai oublié. Ok, now I'm going to get my, uh, where is my other, my gilet blade because I want to be able to cut nicely without um, dragging at all. So, I'm going to first cut them in half. I know the strings right now look fairly large, but once the the whole thing is going to be uh, reduced, it's going to look much different. So you can see how the whole thing looks like right now. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually grab a little bit of sunshine. I forgot my machine was on the lowest on the lowest. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a third uh, Skinner blend, but this time it's not going to be one that dramatic. Okay, because it takes a long time with these. If you remember and you have seen my uh, Skinner blend tutorial, um, the biggest uh, difference in uh, intensity of, uh, of the colors you're blending, the more passes you have to, uh, to go through the machine to blend them. But what I'm going to do now, because I need right now a fairly thin uh, line, so I have sunshine yellow, I have white, and I'm going to get just a sliver of, so this is half of the alizarin crimson. I'm going to actually cut in half again, so I have a quarter. Remember, when you measure, you have to have all your clay on the same thickness, and if you use the same cutter, it doesn't matter the shape. I just prefer to use the square one because it's easier to measure. If you use the same cutter, 
And this is how you measure the parts. So I'm going to cut this quarter in half, which is not really in half. And then I'm going to use one half here. And then the other one, I'm going to cut it again in half. So I have one eighth here, one sixteen here, and I'm going to actually get just half of one sixteen and put it here. Which if I would have wanted to do a triangle, it would have been a whole pain to calculate, right? But what I need is for these to get well stuck together. And I don't think I need to move this to the pasta machine, right? Because you've seen how I do the Skinner blend. And I'll just go real quick doing it. I'm just panning it. when I said that it's the easiest way uh, to speed up the gradient is to roll it and then you can tuck in the ends as well and this will be the vein yeah that's the only thing you can find. Now, the thing is that here you don't actually want a pure white because the alizarin crimson is so stainy, it's going to push into the white, but you don't want to bring the alizarin crimson from the start to put alizarin crimson here because then it will be too much of it. So as you keep passing it through the machine, it will push in a little bit in the white. to get the whole thing straight to do the extended version, right? So 
I'm just going to get this a little bit, but I'm going to go only to like a four or five. I'm not going to go all the way on sin. <laughs> starting to form the leaves okay remember we have three lobes and each of them have to be different so I'm going to create three lobes each of these I'm cutting in four And I'm going to keep them a little bit separated by color so I can do the mix and match. Okay, now let's create, let's build the lobes. Okay, let's get the top one first. I'm going to go a little bit lighter on the right side. So, the middle lobe, a little bit lighter on the white side, on the right side. So, Two of these, two of these, and then I'm going to go a tad darker. These are similar. This is the one that's a tad darker. Let me get two similar ones. I don't want one this thick. They are not perfectly straight. So this will be my middle lobe. The right lobe will have more of the light colored, right? So I always need four quarters on each side. I'm going to have these and then two of the little bit darker one. And now the left lobe. I'm going to use the darker colors, the lighter ones on the tip, and then darker ones on this side. So these will be my three lobes. Let me mix these like this, because the ones on the top will be a little bit thinner. Now watch this, because I'm going to um, create the veining from them. So, as I said, the right side will have a little bit, will be a little bit lighter. The left side will be a little bit darker, right? So, let me to start with cut this one in half. And I'm going to start with this. Can you see how I'm doing it? Let me try and bring it a little bit lower. So I'm simply covering this each quarter. And now you, you can see why I didn't 
wrap the whole jelly roll because I need each of these to be a little bit different. And no worry if it's a little bit shorter because you can always pull on it. So now I'm going like this. I hope I have enough. Okay, don't pester me, please. I'll whisper once. Okay, I don't have enough, so I'm going to have to make a little bit, just a pinch of mix more. Just a little bit of a pinch, unfortunately. I need just for two more quarters. And I'm going to go the same way, starting from here going towards the lighter part. And I'll probably need on this side as well, but oh well. That's not a big deal. I'll be able to make it properly. Okay, so it's 2.20 where I am. I'm going to take a break now. Before I come back, I will uh, make a small mix to cover these remaining quarters. And we'll finish the cane. Okay, because I've been up for like an hour and a half. I need to take a short break. So uh, I'll see you all in 40 minutes. And thank you for being here. And we will finish the maple leaf cane, which I promise you is going to be gorgeous. <laughs> OK, so I'll see you in 40 minutes at the top of the hour.